I like that. Well, yeah. let's let's introduce Jeff real quick since we officially yeah. like welcome to the Shoot It Straight podcast. Everybody. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I yeah, appreciate thank you it. So much for for coming on here. We um yeah. today's guest, NPC bodybuilder, doctor of physical physical therapy in pursuit of your pro card. Um, Dr. Jeff Hart, you have a very unique multifaceted background, just to name a few. You've competed in CrossFit. You're now competing in bodybuilding. You've competed in powerlifting. You're certified by TPI, which is something else we'll Mm -hmm. talk about for sure today. Strength and conditioning. You do the Graston method and dry needling, just to Mm -hmm. name a few. I literally could like read your bio for like six minutes, so I I truncated it down. Appreciate Um, that. But it's really great to have you. Yeah, thanks for having me. No, appreciate appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, for sure. It's so funny, like how we came in. Obviously, we came in contact with you through your profession. I was, we were doing a lot of CrossFit training mm-hmm. stuff, style yeah. stuff last year. So Cody and I were, both were hurting all the time. Which actually <laughs> right. Happens. Some of that. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, as soon as we moved to South Florida, I was like, oh, I need to find a PT right away. And your name came yep. up immediately. And then it's good to know a match made in, a match made in heaven. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Worked out. For bad. But um, yeah. what I loved about you right away and what I liked about hearing about you even before meeting you was like your, was your background of being a little bit yeah. of more of uh, not just um, one dimensional and having a background in mm-hmm. different sports and just getting it. I feel like that's your thing is like, you get it. You get yeah. the things that you're working with. You work with a lot mm-hmm. of bodybuilders and so yeah. I'm sure they appreciate right. that with you too. So mm-hmm. um, Thank yeah, you, you're you're um, a man of many many talents. So it's it'll be fun to kind of dive into your background a yep. little bit today, and uh, of course, of course, talk about what you're up to now in the bodybuilding space. Sure. Yeah. And of course, all things dogs for those that weren't. Yes. That we loved. <laughs> to talk about. Yeah. All the dogs. Dogs are priority <laughs> over everything. Free show in there where we're talking about dogs for five minutes. Yep. So. Yeah. So tell yep. us what have you been up to lately? I mean, I'd love to kind of hear about yeah. your bodybuilding journey. I mean, the last time that we spoke was about, you know, six, seven months ago, you got married, yeah. you were, you were yep. competing yep. around your birthday in December. Um, so mm-hmm. tell us about what's going on now. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, my wife, my wife, Jenna and I competed in uh, December at nationals, which is in Orlando. And so this was my first time moving up uh, and competing in, in actual bodybuilding instead of classic physique at a national show. So I competed in light heavyweights, uh, got top 10. So I was really happy with 10th place. Wow. And so out of about 20, 20 some guys, and these, these are some of the best guys in the country shooting for pro cards. So really cool. Um, you know, I suffered pretty, pretty good to get there. And uh, the, the wife, Jenna, she got uh, eighth place uh, in bikini. Awesome. So yeah, so she's actually, what are we now? Today's what, Wednesday? So uh, she's actually just, uh, just about four weeks out from her next show, which is up in Pittsburgh. So, so she's been dialing, dialing it in. Uh, she looks the best she ever has. So she's, uh, we've been kind of working, just keep, I'm trying to do whatever I can for her to keep her healthy and keep her supported and sane during all the competition prep, but she's looking nuts. So we've been doing that, um, you know, for her business and my business has been doing great. So we're just treating a lot of people. Uh, but one of the things this year that is also new, I think, I don't know if, we, if you guys knew I was doing this or not. I started taking some of the functional range conditioning systems courses. Uh, do you have you guys are you guys familiar with either of those? No, tell Anyone? us. I'm not, I'm not. Tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've heard like I'm sure like a lot of people have heard the the like the terms the exercises, cars, uh, or pails and rails. Yeah. And so cars are cars are controlled articular rotations, pails and rails are progressive and regressive angular isometric loading. And mm-hmm. so I've I've heard these terms um, and I've seen people try to demonstrate them, but I didn't really understand it. Right. And so I, you know, I, I took the, the first course, the basic FRC course in February this year, and I had really, really low expectations. And it was, it was just mind blowing. It was awesome. And so a couple, one of the guys in the, uh, in the course, uh, well, the guy who taught the course, another guy who was in the course, who's kind of helping out was a Cairo. And he said, he's changed his whole practice based off his system as a chiropractor. And uh, so I ended up going to Boston in May and took the internal strength model course and just learning of this whole system is it was, was life changing for me and how I treat clients, how I train myself. And I mean, I'm the strongest I've ever been, the most mobile I've ever been, and things just feel good. So I've been kind of implementing all, all that in my practice. That's gonna be a part of my journey, uh, just with training in the off season. Uh, hopefully, step on stage next summer and get the pro card uh, this summer. Hopefully, the wifey gets it here in 
just about four weeks. So that's about what we got going on now. Nothing too exciting. The, the doggies are all doing well. So we have, we have three dogs. So one, a uh, toy Maltese who's 15 years old. She's old and deaf and a little cripple who I do actually do PT with, uh, which is kind of funny. <laughs> literally. Then, I literally do PT with her. It's actually much more fun than working with people because people don't listen and then they're, they talk back to you. And so if you just give a dog some food, they'll do whatever you want. As you, as I'm sure squat knows very well. Yeah, so, yep. I wish you knew better, but yes. Is it? Yes. <laughs> yes. So, so, so all, all three of the dogs we got are great, but that's just, you know, I'm, I'm holding down the fort with the puppies and while, well, you know, the wifey's dialing it in for the next show, but that's kind of what we've been doing here. No, you're killing yeah. it. I, I love that you're always learning and see that's, I think that's just going to be who you are for the rest of your yep. career. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yep. definitely that's, yep. um, you know, that's something I'm very interested in. Um, yeah. I don't use a lot of pails and rails, but I definitely use a lot of cars in like my program. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, for golfers, right? Like, you know, we, you know, especially like the hips, like, you know, like a, like a wall supported hip car or like, yeah. I mean, would a, like a hip airplane kind of fall into the same category? Yeah. Um, Very similar. Yeah. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah. Is it, what's the prerequisite of that? You got to be a doctor like you or kind of. No, shop? no, no. So, so actually, the, 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 just the basic FRC course is very geared towards trainers. Okay. And so, like, if you're going to do, there, there's a lot of different systems that they teach. Um, they do one, like one, uh, like an FRA course, which is, which is the function range assessment course. That's a little more hands-on, but I mean, I don't think there's any really, really, pre- you, you have to take the FRC course to do the internal strength model. And mm-hmm. so, I mean, for the both of you, whether for clients or not, like you'd benefit from it just cause it was, it's very fascinating to understand the dynamics and just, it just makes sense. It kind of fills in a lot of the holes that we have just like for me, at least with training and then also how I was approaching clients. Mm-hmm. And so different, in, different inputs, like if we need to work on capsule space or, you know, uh, connective tissue architecture, like tendon stuff, you know, is it, is it fast twitch muscle we're trying to train? Is it slow twitch? Are we taking it to failure or not? So it's kind of, a, that's, that's a good part of the system. And so it takes a little practice to get there. We kind of learn it. And uh, a lot of my clients are, are guinea pigs for it. I'm still learning because it's new, but I mean, it's, it's awesome stuff. So highly recommended Dr. 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 Dre, uh, Dre Spino and uh, John Quint, uh, both awesome people who taught the courses very, very well. Awesome. Oh, yeah. We're recording this so I can go back and just yeah. I don't, yep. I don't write that down. Or just text me. Or just text me and I'll, I'll, I'll send you there. <laughs> yep, yep. No, well, that's don't. awesome because, like, you know, I'm definitely, I mean, I feel like, you know, um, in, in, in our space, like in the fitness space, especially like in my golf fitness space, um, there's a lot of people coming up and like doing what we do. So staying on the cutting yeah. edge is, is really important as, mm-hmm. you know, as this business grows and just people's wealth of knowledge increases, mm-hmm. like it's very important yeah. to know exactly what's out there and what's going to work the best. And yeah, I mean, I'm a huge fan of cars. Like I said, I mean, I probably could, use yeah. a dozen rails, especially like for, for wrists and stuff like that for golf yeah. mm-hmm. and um, things like that, but definitely could be. I mean, you can even use it. I'm sure a lot of your guys that you work with have a really hard time with rotation. And so, I mean, like, so you mean using the pails and rails for rotation. So like, obviously from a, you know, a, a go- you know, golf, baseball, any rotational sport, it's great. But then think about for bodybuilding, like we have to turn, you know, for a quarter turns. A lot of these guys I work with are massive humans and they don't prioritize their, their mobility like they should. Mm-hmm. And so even for myself, for Jenna, like, you know, whether you're big or small rotational sport or not, you can really use a lot of these tools to unlock range of motion and like un- kind of like unlock these governors that restrict our mobility. So it's really cool stuff. I think I think you'd love it. Yeah. Well, that's a huge part of what I want to talk about today too. Um, because yeah. I'm kind of diving into bodybuilding a little bit. Um, yeah. I've talked, you know, you, when you talk to so many people out there and see what they do, and they mainly with social media, like you know, you connect with so many people. Like there are mm-hmm. some people that still go into the gym and do bodybuilding splits, although their goal yeah. is, you know, to be a, a better golfer or something like that. Not necessarily like yeah. I think most of these people are not ever trying to step on stage with someone like you right but they're right doing yeah, workouts. yeah they're doing yeah. bodybuilding type workouts so but the yeah you know, i mean you know this like the common trend out there is people are or the common thought is that bodybuilders are not mobile at all they're like oh right right so big there's no way you mm-hmm. can do it like that but like you know yep here, here's a prime example of like what you're doing to stay yeah. mobile because it helps you in bodybuilding too right yeah, yeah I'm, I'm 240 pounds and i mean I, if you put me on the floor i can I can put my chest on the ground pretty well and like a, like a, like a V and just, I can put my chest on my legs on the ground. Like I'm pretty mobile for, for being, you know, 200, 240 pounder, pretty big guy right now. So yeah, for those not, yeah. those not watching, you guys should tune into the YouTube channel version of this just because 
Jeff yeah. the entire screen. <laughs> He's not a small man. Yep, I'm large. <laughs> since, since I've seen you guys, I'm probably a lot heavier than I was when I saw you guys. So you yeah, look thick in the best in the best way. <laughs> <laughs> I wait. I, I, I've got to buy new clothes. I'm huge now, 240 pounds. It's the biggest I've ever been in my life. I feel good though. Yeah, that's huge. So, yeah. But, I mean, even yeah. step on stage and do some of the poses that you do, like you know, yeah. you're completely locked up, like. I'm thinking like, you know, what do you call it? Like this, like the double bicep. Yeah, like a front, a front, front double or bicep. Or, yeah, or even a back double bicep because a lot of the guys, you know, like in any joint that's restricted, you know, the goal is to make your muscles show the best as possible. You know, like, so if you can't rotate externally, so if you're here, you can't rotate back. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, the judges aren't going to see it. And then also not only, not only from that, but like from an injury perspective, you know, yeah. when we're training, you know, whether you're doing – any exercises, if your tissue can't handle with the load you're putting on it, it's going to fail eventually. So that's why we see, you know, bicep tears, we see pec tears, you know, a lot of that stuff happens just because the tissue hasn't been loaded at end range. Well, mm-hmm. it's that's where it comes in the, our connective tissue architecture and our joint space, which is so important to work on. hundred percent. I mean, I'm getting very, yeah. I mean, so I, I just started like trying to create my own like bodybuilding program for golfers. I still want to have enough mobility. I want to create, put some power into oh, it. Yeah um and you know golfers do need a little bit of conditioning and things like that so i want to make sure that all and not the bodybuilders don't but like you know i definitely want to make sure i put all these things in there and then you know we've talked about this before like when when we first met is like you know you play golf but there is a point where like you know it it does become challenging just because the song yeah literally gets right like that that's what i've told you before so like if i would love for you to explain that to people like what that actually means when you get actually yeah yeah and most like 99.9% of people will never have this problem, but right. No. Yeah. I mean, and I've, I've listened to you guys' podcast plenty now. And, you know, when people always think they're going to get so big, it's like, no, you're not. Like to, to get where I am, the, 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 I mean, whether you're trying to grow tissue, like if you put on a couple pounds of muscle a year, that's exceptional. Mm-hmm. You know, pe- people, people really overestimate their, their ability. I mean, everything has to be perfect. You have to train super hard. And if the goal is really to grow muscle, as opposed to just getting stronger, there's a big difference there too. And so like once you get to the point though, like trying to squeeze a golf club at, at this size, I mean, it's, it's challenging. You have to modify things, you know, but I mean, you, you can make it work. You know, there's a lot of ways to get things done. As long as you, you, you try, you can modify it and just fine tune stuff. Right. But it's definitely, definitely it did, being this size definitely makes it challenging. That's for sure. Yeah. But should you take away that if there was a way to not be as physically large it's not your mobility that's getting in the way it's yeah the no you're, you're it's just the physically. tissue yeah yeah yeah, yeah so like when i when i squeeze a golf club i'm trying to keep my you know my chest gets in the way i'm just like it's like i'm constantly contracting i'm trying to hold the club so yeah it just but you know if i slight little little slight bend in the elbow little modifications you can make it happen yeah yeah and jeff does have a track man you still have a track man back there in your facility yeah yeah oh there's a track man back there yep yeah see oh yeah <laughs> got a track man, we got the gym That's in the funny. back, the track man. Yep. Yep. Man of many, many talents and things. Well, I think one thing that's, in, that's kind of that Cody and I have talked about recently is that we feel like bodybuilding is making a comeback. Now this, I, is think so, that yeah. I, I don't, I'm not immersed in the world. Obviously we're in the right. industry and obviously we go to the gym and we see what's out there and I don't think bodybuilding certainly ever died, but it does seem to be making like a mm-hmm. resurgence. And I'd be interested yeah. in kind of your take on that, Jeff, like, mm-hmm. You know, yeah. like becoming more mainstream. I mean, mm-hmm. we've watched Arnold now on Netflix. Like, there's all kinds yep. of like more pop culture right. things like, yeah. that are making it a little bit more accepting. Right. So, what's your take yeah. on it? Like, are you feeling like yeah. is it getting more competitive? Is there more people ever? Oh yeah, work? yeah. Oh yeah. They, and if you look at any division across the board, I mean, whether it's you know women's divisions in bikini, uh, women's figure, physique, and then even for the guys, I mean, over the last, you know, five, 10 years, every single year, it's more competitive. Yeah. I mean, people just keep getting bigger, keep people getting, you know, it gets more conditioned, the better. And it just makes it more fun. You know, it's not, you know, they, they do give out more pro cards than they used to, but I mean, there's, you have so many more competitors. I mean, there, it's just some of the shows that, that Jenna and I have done. I mean, there's a thousand total competitors at the shows. I mean, it is crazy. And I do think a lot of it, you know, social media is obviously huge. You know, there's a lot of really good bodybuilders that really promote it. And especially because of the, the different divisions that they have. Now. So they have, you know, classic physique, which most people are familiar with Chris Bumstead. And so like people can kind of feel like they can emulate that, emulate that look. I mean, no one's going to look like him. He's, he's, uh, you know, one of a kind, but if you can not, not, you know, if you don't have to be, you know, five, seven or five, eight, and, you know, 240 pounds on stage, 
you know, you can be, you know, I think for my height, you know, if, if I'm 5'8 on a good day, uh, the weight cap for classic physique is in the 190s. So that's still like oh. achievable. That's for the pros. Yeah. So it's even a little, it's a little less than amateur, but like it's still, you know, relatively achievable. And so it's, I think because you open up more classes too, it makes people kind of feel like they have, they're not going to like fall too far to the category. So it's, I think it makes it a little more achievable to be somewhat competitive at your height and weight, as opposed to it just being all full of mass monsters, which, which we used to see, you know, the Ronnie Coleman's, the Dorian Yates and all those guys. So big, you know, Jay Cutler, a lot of the big guys, like back in the day, it was just the big, you know, that's what, that's what we saw. Right. So now just makes it a little, little more, more divisions for people to fit into. I think. You mentioned that people, you're, they're getting on more pro cards. Is there not a cap or like, mm-hmm. how does that, how does that work? Yeah. 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 So, so, so there's only like, you don't quote me on this. I don't know how many there's probably in our country, six to eight pro qualifying shows a year, you know, so some of the bigger ones, there's going to be like, in some shows there's junior shows and not everyone can turn pro at a junior show. But so like some of the bigger shows, which we just had uh, just this past weekend was USA's it's out in Vegas. And so some divisions, the top two turn pro and some divisions, the top one. And so for men's bodybuilding, you know, if you're, if you're not in first place uh, in your respective weight class, there's one pro card uh, for classic physique, there's two, because it's, it's also a newer division. Uh, but then if you look at uh, North Americans coming up here that Jenna's doing, um, I believe it's just the top one in each class, you know, the one, okay. the show we did in December, uh, top two in each category turn pro. So it depends on the show. I don't know how that's really decided. Um, really just depends on the show you're doing, but there's a little more, a little more given out. I mean, there is a way less, there were less opportunities, you know, 10, 20 years ago, because obviously yeah. the sport wasn't where it is. And obviously probably wasn't, wasn't as much money to fund it either. And so there's a little more opportunity, I think, across the board, um, you know, for people to compete for one. And for two, it just, it, as the sport continues to grow, it's just more competitive. And so you got to kind of give, you know, give some people, I think give, give more opportunities. Otherwise some of these shows, like I said, there's a thousand people at these shows. If you didn't have more opportunities, you might have, you know, 50 people in each class. And how do you judge that? You know, it's, it just makes it more challenging, I think. Can you make a living now on bodybuilding without being completely broke? Or is that still for the no. top 1%? No, no. Now, yeah. That's actually been kind of talked about a lot this, this yeah. year with the pros. I mean, so some of these shows, like this weekend uh, is coming up Tampa Pros this weekend. And I think there's like six, maybe seven, eight guys total in open bodybuilding. And so people, you know, are kind of knocking the fact that it's not as competitive but if you're paying these guys, you know, five or ten thousand dollars, if you win, I mean, like, where's the incentive there? Yeah. I mean, sure, ten grand, ten grand, great, you know, great money, but that's not going to like change your life, you know. So if there's more opportunities, and plus these guys are people really underestimate how much they uh, like how hard bodybuilding is. Like mm-hmm. people really, really underestimate that. I mean, it's what what these what these pros do to their bodies day in and day out. I mean, the dedication, the work they put in, I've seen it firsthand with a lot of these guys and they, they really sacrifice a lot. And when you're doing a job 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you're getting paid pretty small amount, you know, to, to win these shows, it's, it's kind of sad, you know, hopefully in the near future. I mean, every year, the big shows, the Olympia, the Arnold's, they're paying out more money, but hopefully we can, there's a better way they can fund this and and kind of, you know, better, whether it's sponsors, things like that, that can contribute more because the, it just makes it challenging, I think. It's, it's almost like CrossFit and I know I can talk CrossFit with you yeah. and I haven't been yeah. following it as yeah. closely, but CrossFit over the last couple of years has been going through sort of an identity crisis as well with like what Big they're time. doing. Yeah. And, and, and I think bodybuilding is maybe the same way where it's like, you've got the, the, the pro level bodybuilding and the pro level CrossFit is nothing like what you mm-hmm. see in the day-to-day gyms for both of those. Right. Sports. Right. And then the second part of that is like, is it worth it for these people to be giving their life training four hours a day plus seven days a week? Right. Make maybe yeah. not that much money unless you happen to win the cross right. games and happen to have a lot of or you have a big or big spot, you know. Yeah, the, the sponsors is kind of where I think most of these guys make the money. I mean, you know, some of the some of the top guys, you know, they're they're lucky enough to have you know huge sponsors that are probably paying them, you know, up you know, north of 10 grand a month, you know, to rep their product, but Unless you're unless you're one of the top, you know, ten in the world, there's no way it's a living. You know, it's like you know they, these guys probably train people. They have big sponsors. They, um, you know, do some coaching on their side too. But like, there's yeah, not many people can get away with it. Most, I mean, some of these guys still a lot of them probably still have day jobs too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of a scenario of like where 
the top and are like kind of like a, a rich get richer kind of thing because they can afford to like spend all their time training and, and have the best like you know nutrition the best supplements you know whatever it is that they're what they're putting into their bodies like you know, like, like matt fraser was i think he was able to win so many years in a row because he didn't have to go to work every day right like he could just right that, that yeah. has to play a role in it when like the guy in 10th is or mm -hmm. pat Elner is like working his job every day like i mean I, right. I don't know, but yeah I, 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 I mean like, okay so was, yeah <laughs> he's been, I mean, dude, so, some some of these guys that are still in the CrossFit world, dude, I don't know how you do it. I'm I'm 34, I mean, I feel broken. Like uh, yes. at 30, I was like, I'm like, yes. I'm done. Like, how these guys stay healthy is beyond me. So, like, yeah. um, when did you when did you make the trend? Like, I want to talk hear a little bit more about your CrossFit days because uh, in, in the theme yeah. of recording this, we're not going to release it today, but the CrossFit game started mm -hmm. yesterday, I think. Um, today, yep. like one for the for the uh, yep. individuals. I yeah. Yesterday it was like age group. Which yeah. you actually have it on yep. in the, your office in there. He's I probably got it on in yeah. the background. He's watching it. Oh, oh, oh I like, have it on. I totally have it on. Yeah. And, and when you made the transition yeah. to bodybuilding and like, and then kind of how long, yeah. like how big were you as a CrossFitter? And then like, how long did it take to get big enough to compete as a bodybuilder? Because like people still don't yeah. understand that. Like yeah, CrossFit yeah. is too big and jacked, but they're, st they're yeah. not still like, I mean, they're not a bodybuilder. It's crazy. Great, great question. Great question. So, so I, I, you know, when I moved down here from Ohio in 2011, um, you know, I was still like in the bodybuilding world. I weighed about a buck 60 on a good day and I was pretty small mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I was still just lifting weights doing my thing. And I used to be like, the, I used to be the fat kid. So I was always concerned about gaining weight and I didn't really, I didn't have the, the, the education enough and the understanding so that I'd get, you know, gain a little weight and lose the abs in order to, to actually grow. Right. So, uh, you know, when I was in PT school first year, uh, one of the, one of the girls that's in my program, uh, she made it to the CrossFit games. She was a great CrossFitter and she kind of sucked me into it. So sure enough, started to go to, started, started going to the CrossFit gym with her and I had a blast with it. It was fun, competitive, you know, I, over time I got good at it and I just loved the environment. And so I, I did that, man. Whew. So 2011 until 2018. Yeah. So I was in it. Like relatively early in the like that's when CrossFit started. Yeah. I think right CrossFit didn't start to like 2006 right. or something. That's back when the men yeah. snatched like 85 pounds and call it good. Yeah. <laughs> like, right? No, yeah. no, literally. Yeah. It, it was like, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it was like you snatch 135, you're awesome. You know, it's yeah. like nowadays if you're not snatching 300, like you should quit. And, like it's, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Like my shoulders would explode if I tried to do that nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So. So, yeah, so I, I got sucked into the CrossFit world and, you know, it's pretty, pretty good at it. It wasn't great. Um, you know, as a team, we made it to regionals uh, a couple of times and which was cool. And then, uh, you know, did a lot of local, local competitions. You know, people are going to, people are going to make fun of me here, but I'm going to say it. My, my claim to fame is beating, beating Matt Frazier in two events at one of the show, one of the competitions we did, like, God, it'd probably be like six, seven, probably 70 years ago yeah. down here in Florida. So, I mean, it was, it, it, I miss it. I, I do miss it though. Like just the camaraderie and the people like getting to yeah. compete against someone like Matt Frazier and Noah Olson. Yes. It's a lot of these guys are just, they're all cool guys. Like the, the girls are pretty nasty to each other. Uh, you know, uh, like backstage and competitive. Yeah. Women know it. Right. Uh, and all the guys, it was just, they're so cool. Everyone was fun. And the camaraderie, we like, we almost like strategized together. Like how, how are you going to break that up? How are you going to do that? Like, it was just fun, mm -hmm. you know, just doing all that. And I, it was a great time. My body was a little beat up after a while. And so when I met my wife, uh, my now wife, when I met her in January of 2019, she was competing uh, in bikini and bodybuilding. And I did two shows back in college. I weighed uh, about, a, you know, buck 55 soaking wet. Uh, back when I competed the first that. time. We need pictures. Oh, That's no. A oh, they're hilarious. God, I look like a Holocaust victim. I was, it was scary. I was. <laughs> It was sad. I it was scary. Like I was skin and bones. I looked like, yeah, it was bad. It was bad. So yeah, I was tired. I was right tired. now. I mean, for yeah, I was, guys, I, if if you're watching this, like, you see the difference. Like Jeff is an inch or two taller than me, but yeah. I, I'm 170 and he's 240. So I mean, there's, you know, it's yeah, like, yeah, I'm 240. Yeah, this is a massive so, yeah, difference. I, and you know, one, yeah. you know, 140 be wild. Yeah. Yeah, so I was just a little guy, and um, you know, so when I met my wife, she uh, she told me she's like, and I was on our first date. I'll never forget this. She's like, I'm gonna get you to do another show, and in my in my head, I'm I'm rolling my eyes. I'm like, there's no way in hell anyone's getting me back on a bodybuilding stage. Like, knowing what it took to get there, 
the the dieting, the cardio, the sacrifice. I'm like, there's no way. And so sure enough, two months later, I hired a coach and I stepped on stage that 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 July. You didn't waste any time. No. <laughs> no. Okay. And so and so at the yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. What are you saying? But, but a much different like category than what you're competing in now. Yeah. Right. There's right. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's so many different ones. Yeah. So so when I when I when I met my wife, uh when I met Jenna, I was probably a buck eighty five, you know, weighed about a buck eighty five. And so I died and maybe, maybe, maybe almost 190. I hired a coach. We we had a little growth phase. And then we we dieted pretty hard down to uh 175. And I think the lowest I got that year, uh, because we did a couple shows that year, I got down to about 170. And so I was just small, competed at middleweights, I competed in classic physique. I was just I was small, you know. So like I, I was lean, but I had I needed more muscle. And you know, at the height I'm at, you just didn't look good on me. And so over time, I the next next year after that too, I was trying to slowly uh, grow, but also fit into the weight class and suffering to get down to that 175, 176 just wasn't working. And so started working with Matt Jansen, uh, who's like a really popular, great coach, uh, one of the best in the world. Uh, he's, he's located up in this, up in Stewart, which isn't far. I linked up with him and then he told me, he's like, Hey Jeff, sorry, buddy, you're not classic anymore. You're a bodybuilder. Like you're, you you do not have a pretty physique. Like we're moving up in a weight class. So that year I, I stepped on stage, I think it was 20, what, 2021. Um, I still wasn't ready to step on stage, but I, I won, I won my class in light heavies with the great caps, 198. Uh, so I won a local show at that. And then we took the, the rest of the year off. Then I stepped on the national stage just this past year. And so I, I probably gained you know, a good five to eight pounds this, you know, in the off season with, with his coaching. Um, the biggest I got, last off season was probably 225 to 227 and it held it and i still have another good five months to grow i don't want to get that much bigger than i am now because losing 40 pounds for the next show is going to be pretty miserable oh lord that's yeah yeah oh. so if you have a little more tissue to spare i mean obviously when you diet hard you're going to lose some muscle but yeah. if you have a little extra tissue to spare it's kind of a good thing so 240 has been a, a is, is very challenging to maintain. I mean, I'm I'm not trust me, I'm not doing a lot of cardio. Um, I'm just eating a lot of food and training hard. That's kind of where, where things are right now. How many calories do you eat to get up to 240 pounds? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, on, on a day to day basis, I mean, you guys know like what I do is like I'm not very active in the office. I'm doing stuff with my hands. I'm doing some soft tissue. Nothing too crazy between some dog walks. So I'm not super, super active. My, my training sessions are anywhere between 60 and 75 minutes, probably five days a week. I'm eating upwards of 4,200 calories a day. So, and that's a, yeah, you guys both look at each other like, it's a lot of food. Yeah. That's a that lot. is a lot of food for, and like you said, that's you're not good. that active that's right now. So I imagine even if yeah. you have a few extra steps in there, you'd have to be pushing right. 5,000 calories. Is it like, yeah. and, carbs, right? like how many carbs you put down? Oh yeah. I want to get most of the days, it's probably a little over 500. Yeah. yeah. What's your fat? Your fat are like fifty five, and your carbs are like seven hundred a day. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, like I mean, I ate about three hundred grams of protein a day. You know, carbs north of five hundred. Fats probably seventy to eighty. Wow. You know, it, yeah, yeah it's wow. a lot of food. Wow, that's so low. Yeah. Well, wow. you, like, so is it a lot of shakes, or like, is it just straight up chicken breasts and fish? Yeah. So I do. I mean, I'm like, sure that that. So my coach might kill me if I say this, but. I'm like 80, 20 on my diet. So sometimes I'm sure that fat number is a little inflated. Okay. Uh, I love that for bit. you. The, the nutrition yeah. lifestyle girl in me is like, yeah. good, for you. good for you. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So like, I'm probably, let's say for, for being honest, I'm sure it's probably hundred grams of fat a day, you know, give or take. Okay. And yeah. then, you know, yeah. Cause don't get me wrong. I, I love like, like my wife and I love like at night, she, even though she's in prep. So I make sure I don't, I don't over, I don't overstep my boundary, but I mean, we do like a little rice cake with some nut butter and yes. like, like I, I do it with some some like strawberry preserves or some jelly and stuff and that's like my little pb and j snack so like, i just love i love my peanut butter i love my almond butter i have to have a little extra of it so and i love my steak so i eat a lot of red meat too so yeah have you seen our post on the ninja creamy have you ever heard of the ninja creamy yeah oh dude i I, 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 I need i need to get one i need to get you one do. Oh, you guys do you need one, one. that Literally. would perfectly fit what you yeah. wish you do yeah perfectly it looks yeah, amazing it's oh it's so good all right i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna order one right when we're done yeah, yeah you it looks amazing. It, it's amazing. Saw, yeah, we love it. It tastes delicious. Um, I do love my actual ice cream too. So, like I said, I'm in the off season, so I can kind of get away with a yeah, a little bit of hand up, a little bit of here and there, some extra. Yeah, because like if I if I miss some meals, man, I, I drop weight, you know. So it's it's tough. 
like immediately. It is tough. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. Were like, fuck, fuck, I'm ten pounds lighter. Yeah. If I miss some meals or I have a bad like a bad week, or something I just can't get it. I'm too busy. I'll drop a couple pounds easily, and so it's you know it's it's a uh, anybody who says they they eat a lot, they're they're full of shit because they don't. I mean, right. if anyone try like anyone who if anyone says oh, I'm trying to gain weight, but they they you know there's no way they're eating enough. Yeah. No, I want, I would love to hear that from you because I think there's always power in reinforcement. But yeah, for, from you, you've worked with General Pop too, and you've been in this industry yeah. for long enough. Yeah. And I think like one yeah. thing that we that we talk about on here a lot is like just self-realization and self-awareness with clients yeah. and the people that are out there wanting to get, whether it's get, whether it's get bigger, get stronger or the other way and like lose body fat. And I think like the right. number one thing is that people just aren't being honest with themselves, but I'd love Big to time. kind of your, your take on that since you just kind of yeah. lost over it a little bit with like, right. you're, you're not gaining because you're not eating enough. You're not losing weight yeah. because you're eating more than you think that yeah. you are, right? So oh, oh yeah. What, yeah. What, what are your like what are your common ones or where do you yeah. think people go wrong from either it's body yeah. or or PT or yeah. any, any of those? Right, right, right. So we we can we can I mean it, it all it all kind of comes down to the same thing. You know, if somebody's got some some elbow issue or a back issue, you know, and you can we can do a lot of soft tissue, we can dry needle it, it can get we can get it, we can get it feeling better. But I'm gonna give you, you know, X, Y, and Z to do at home, you know, every single day or, you know, four times a week. And if you're not doing these things to reinforce what we did, it's not going to get better. You come back in a week. Oh, Hey, it's not any better. Okay. Well, what have you been doing? Show me what you've been doing. And then they can't show you, you know, they don't know how many reps, how many sets, if you're not, you know, logging what you're doing in the gym, you know, every, like, I don't know, I don't know how you guys track it, but I'm a pen and paper guy. So every machine I use in the gym or everything I do I write it down. I write the weights. I write the reps. If I get partial reps, I put plus one, plus two. Like I'm logging it. So I know, and I, I know, and I'm logging the order, you know? So if you're not tracking your, your, the data, how do you know if you're improving, you know, what that, whether that's with food, whether that, you know, so like, you know, I have a scale, I weigh, I weigh most of my food. I'm it's the off season. Don't, don't judge me. Not but judging, I, I do, love it. Don't judge. Don't judge. I mean, once you get good at it too, you kind of, you kind of gauge how much, how much, you know, you can guess how much pretty close, how much you're eating once yes. you do it enough. But no, like, like my wife and I, we still weigh out all our food. It takes two seconds to do. You just prop your thing on the, on the scale and just fill up what you're eating, whether it's rice or meat or whatever, you know, and if you're not tracking that data, how do you expect to improve? You know, I, I can't remember last, you know, last Thursday, you know, how much weight I did on, you know, how many reps I got, you know, on shoulder press. Right. I can't remember that. Did I get no. partials? Did I, did I use a two and a half? Like, I don't, I can't remember. So if you're not like, I think that's a big thing people, people forget is like, if you really want to make progress, you have to be diligent about it. You got to really, you know, be mindful, you know, like all the things, if you want to get, if you want to be the best golfer in the world, or you're just best, be the best bodybuilder in the world, everything has to be perfect. I mean, I'm sure you, you guys, I mean, we can, we can talk about some of the best, best athletes in the world. I mean, we can talk about Tiger. We can talk about Kobe. We can talk about MJ, you know, we can talk about Tom Brady, like, any of these guys we can talk about, like if you, if anyone really actually looked at their work ethic and career, I mean, these guys were showing up really to practice, staying late. And they, they, they put in multiple hours more than everyone else and they tracked all their stuff. They were so perfect with what they did. That's why they were great. Mm -hmm. So and if we can break all that down into something simple, like, oh, my back hurts or my ankle hurts. Well, how's your mobility? How's your strength? You know, what have you been doing? If we can break down all these variables and then actually get a routine that supports, you know, where they're struggling. And if they're not doing it to the T or they're just slacking on it, how are they going to improve? You know, that's kind of how I feel about it. No, I love, I, I love that. And I love that coming too from a guy who's not, um, you know, we're not 20 anymore. And I think as we no. age and, and we're also not 40 or 50, right. So maybe no. I'll kick myself yeah. but saying this myself, yeah. yourself, but right. people like to just kind of put whatever they want in, in front of them as an excuse, right. whether it's like, well, I'm getting older. And so I can't anymore. And it's like, Jeff, you're right. a perfect example of someone who yeah. still put on size and mass and train hard. Mm -hmm. And I think Cody and I are actually in, a, yeah. in, in that same phase too. My, I mean, I was like the skinny runner girl for so long. Yeah. And now it's like, you know, you can watch mm -hmm. 215 pounds and do the things yeah. I never thought I could do right. in my mid thirties. Yeah. So it's like right. consistency, consistency, consistency and yeah. tracking over years, mm -hmm. truly years. Mm -hmm. I I'll actually give you another little example of that. So, so my, my dad, he's in great shape. He's 66. Uh, he, he's been retired a couple of years. And so he, he actually called me up like a couple months ago and he's asked, he, he called me, left me a message. He's like, 
I said, Jeffrey, I got a, I got a bodybuilding question for you. So he called me up and he just wanted some more guidance on, you know, how to get, how to be better in the gym. You know, he, he eats protein, uh, not enough. His pre-workout nutrition wasn't great. And so I kind of wrote a program up for him and I explained to him, you know, training, you know, relatively close to failure and how to, you know, how to grow tissue, how to get stronger. And he's been doing it for a month now. And he, he texts me all the time. He's like, man, I feel great. He's like, I'm gonna need more weight on the, this machine now. And so, I mean, he's 66. I mean, and he's, he's been, he's been active his whole life. Awesome. You know, if you looked at my mother-in-law, I mean, she's my mother-in-law, father-in-law, both excellent shape and they're, they're, they're in their sixties and they, they're killing it. You know, it's like, it doesn't, doesn't matter which age you're at. You know, if you just really put in the time and the effort and, you know, your, your nutrition's on point and it doesn't matter how old you are, there's always, it's never, it's never too late to start either. It's just, well, what's a priority to you? You know, if, right. not a, if you, if you don't make time for it, I mean, I, I, I used to work, you know, 10, 12 hour days. I still found time to get in the CrossFit gym in the morning. Yep. You know, you, you gotta make time for it. That's, that's, that's the important thing. 100%. I have, we work, I work with a bunch of desk jockeys and I used to be in accounting, yeah. corporate accounting, seven days, right, week, right. 10, 12 hour day right. bullshit, still made time for business. So it's always funny yeah. when people are like, well, I don't have time because I'm, I don't work in this industry. And it's like, I, I've done that thing too. I've done that job too. Right. Like we've all been yeah. in different situations and seasons of life. And I think like just getting out of your own way and being realistic with your expectations of yourself. Um, yeah. People tend to kind of shoot themselves in the foot a little bit, but I think it's harder when you're in the industry and you're working with people all day, you're in the gym all day, then to actually work out yes, yourself. It is. Oh yeah. Like, you know, that's why my biggest yeah. problem is like, if I trained eight people, I mean, 10 is a whole lot. So eight's like max for a day. Like, yeah, it's the same for me. Eight, eight, like, eight, you know, that's a lot. Um, Come on. the last thing I want to do is work out some more. Like after I was watching right. TV, work out, like, you know, right. and then I think the, yep. you know, I hope this doesn't change the subject too much, but you, you kind of hit on this a little bit about training to failure and things like that. You know, mm-hmm. that's one thing I'm, I'm, you know, cause I'm doing like a bodybuilding ish yep. program right now, like getting close to failure yep. and figuring that out right now is like where yep. I'm really able to push myself and it's a lot of fun. Yep. Um, and then, you know, you, you do that in CrossFit and like with the barbell, but a different way. So like. I'd love yeah. to hear kind of from you, like what exercises you used to do to push yourself and then kind of the exercises you do now. At, yeah. And of course you're tracking all of these still like kind of, so yep. in what we were talking about, not go too off subject, but, yeah. um, yeah. you know, what, what is, what's changed? Like, can you, can you tell me like what's changed so yeah. much? Like how you used to train like day in and day out, like what the exercises mm-hmm. used to look like and what they look like now. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Yeah. I mean, great. I mean, obviously you know, going from the CrossFit gym to, to a bodybuilding gym. I mean, you know, I, I've been in, in the fitness world for a long time. And, you know, I'm 34. I've been, I've been doing this stuff for, I've been in the gym since I was like 13, you know, and, you know, it's been a long time and you're always learning something new, right. you know, like, I feel like once, once you get to the point where you think, you know, everything, you know, you, I think you're an absolute idiot because nobody knows it all. We're always learning, you know, what, what works for you guys might not work for me. You know, right. like one of the things that, that we're so focused on in, you know, whether it's golf, whether it's baseball, whether it's, uh, you know, CrossFit, whatever we're doing we're so focused on external output. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we're so, we're so focused on, okay, I'm going to, you know, I, I'm going to, you know, swing this club. I don't want the ball to go, you know, perfectly down in fair away. Perfect. Right. Or in CrossFit, I'm going to move this bar over my head. We don't really think about, you know, what, what goes into that? What does my shoulder have to do? What do my ankles have to do in order to make this effective movement? And so one of the things I think that we're missing in especially CrossFit of all things, you know, is your body physically capable of doing yeah. a snatch or an overhead squat? Like, do you have the hip and ankle and knee mobility and shoulder mobility to hit these things? Otherwise, we're asking for injury. You know, and that's one of the things that that's very different is it's like, okay, well, here, here's a workout. You're doing this. And just, you know, you don't have a choice. It's barbell, this, this, and this. You know, you might can scale it back, but, you know, maybe, maybe someone's not even ready for the barbell, you know? So that's like a big, you know, big thing in CrossFit is just like, here's the plan. Go figure it out. You know, whereas in bodybuilding, it's like, well, what, what do I feel like I connect with? You know, so I don't know. I think it might have been one of you guys on a on one of your podcasts, and I think Eric, it might have been you. You said bodybuilders uh, try to make lightweights feel heavy, and powerlifters try to make uh, heavyweights feel light. I, think I did that they, say did, that. Is that correct? I sure and did. That, 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 that stuck. <laughs> that stuck with me because that stuck with me because I was like, that is a great way to put it. Because that's that's the difference between, you know, a sport that we're doing for performance or a sport for aesthetics. And so, you know, when I'm in the gym, I'm trying to like now I'm trying to feel the muscle work. 
it's not just move this bar from point A to point B or move the machine from point A to point B. If I'm just doing that, I don't feel what I'm working. To me, it's a waste of time. Yeah. You know, that, that's, and so like I've seen CrossFit, same thing, powerlifting, you know, I want to make this bar feel light as opposed to, I want to make this muscle work harder. Right. And so that's kind of the big difference. And so a lot of this, and people, one, I think, I think one of the most overrated pieces of equipment in the gym right now, uh, from a bodybuilding perspective, or even a strength perspective is the barbell. You know, I think like not, not, not all barbell movements, but I think from a, a pressing movement, if we're doing shoulders or chest, I think it's a very overrated piece of equipment because we're not going to get full functionality of the, what the muscles do. A lot of machines or dumbbells nowadays, let your body move in the lines that we want. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the newer age systems, you know, uh, Atlantis is a great company. Um, you know, Panada makes great equipment now. And a lot of these newer companies, even prime, a lot of these newer companies kind of create a much better biomechanical setup. And so that's, that's what we focus on now is just contraction. People, people think you need to do big barbell movements to grow. I mean, I know a ton of pro bodybuilders that haven't touched the barbell bench press or squat in a decade and they're massive. Yeah. So you got to just figure out at the end of the day, what you, what you connect with, you know, what, what feels good for you, what feels good in your joints. And so that's kind of how it shifted even more so now. And also when we're doing performance sports, it's more about speed. And we're now it's more about control and I'm trying to control the movement. It's slower. You know, that's kind of where I think things shift when you're going from a performance sport and as opposed to like a bodybuilding sport. Right. Yeah. And like, you know, now it's definitely, as opposed to, I need to move this weight X amount of times. Like that's my goal for today or whatever. It's like how many, you know, I, I'm learning this now. It's like, you know, where can I get my hard like sets or reps in like how close can I get to failure? Like, I read some studies. It was like, you know, the last five, like most important, like you don't yeah. want to do like necessarily yeah. set your five, but you want to like get up to right. like, you know, like a nine or a 12 mm -hmm. or something, you know, whatever, seven to 12, I think was like the, what the yeah. was that, and you want those final five to like, you know, still have your technique, like say yeah. you're like, a, like some kind of like, yeah. and mm -hmm. this particular study, I yeah. was fans of any kind of freeways. They were like, oh, let's just do machines. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And, you know, like, let's just feel like, you know, that last five is like, you know, trying to squeeze your elbows mm -hmm. together to yeah. get that fly. And it's like, that should be mm -hmm. shaking. And, you know, really that's what yeah. your goal should be is like getting that close to failure versus like, Hey, let me just lift this amount of weight mm -hmm. X amount of times. Kind of, kind of, if I can tag along to that a little bit. So one of the things too, Pete, Pete, like, I feel like most people don't have any clue what training to failure looks like or feels like. I and I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm yeah. sure both of you. Yeah. And so, you know, shout out to John Quint up at Westside Barbell. Uh, you know, he, he was really good at kind of explaining this concept up in Boston for the uh, functional range ISM course. And so we have to, you know, we have to redefine failure. You know, does failure mean that, you know, obviously within safety, I'm doing a machine. When, when, is, it, when is it real failure? You know, if I, is, it, is it when I stop doing perfectly pretty reps? Well, not necessarily. You know, if I'm doing perfectly controlled, smooth reps on a press, and then what's, let's say I can't get that full rep anymore. Well, then I could do partial reps. And then once I, once I can't do partials, maybe I can do isometric. You know, people kind of under, I think under, undervalue isometrics in training. And I'm sure, I'm sure Cody, I'm sure you use them a lot too with, with clients. But if we do isometrics, we're going to still generate a lot of peak force. And we're going to take that tissue to failure, you know, more so than if we just gave up on the full reps. So obviously like you can't do that on a barbell squat or a deadlift. It's a little different. Um, right. but you know, that's, that's something that I think is, is people need to really understand what it means to train hard because people, you know, most people's failure is probably five, five reps in reserve or more. And so, oh, you know, sure. learn, teaching people, right. Like teach people how to, how to actually train, you know, so I'm you know trying to, you know, the typical, Oh, do three sets of 10. Well, what if, what if 10 is easy? What if, what if you do three sets of 10 and you don't even breathe, heavy, you mm -hmm. know? So we have to like redefine the the parameters, I think, for a lot of people to understand, you know, what, it, how to really make progress in the gym. Yeah, I think that's so important to talk about. I'm so glad that you brought it up because I did want to talk about training yeah. failure with, with Jeff specifically. And again, yeah. coming from a non-bodybuilder type, I do yeah. think another mistake that people make who are the ones going into the gym, and this isn't discrediting people stepping into the gym, but yeah. you have the box checker type people that are, that are very disconnected from their bodies, one, and then two, yep. they're just going in doing either they're not tracking and they're just doing the same shit. And they're wondering why they're not getting mm -hmm. results, even though they're, you know, being consistent. And it's like, 
Right, right. We're not doing the same thing. We could be doing the same exact workout and we each could be getting completely Mm -hmm. different results based on who's listening to their body, who's pushing themselves, choosing the right Mm -hmm. way, pushing to failure. And I think Mm -hmm. that's such an important thing. And I, and I don't know if I, if I have an answer on how it's a mindset thing for sure for some, for for most people, all people, but I'd love to hear your take on like getting people Mm -hmm. to to shift that, that mindset of like either yeah. mailing it in at the gym, knowing when to stay home mm-hmm. and take a rest day. And then also knowing mm-hmm. like that the quality of your workouts is really what matters and being able to push yeah. yourself. Right. I mean, I, I, most it, it's funny. Cause I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure you, I'm sure you've heard this before, but a lot of people think us bodybuilders are in the gym for three, four hours a day. And then we're doing two days. It's like, no, I train. So I, I think you guys know the listeners probably don't. I've had two ACL surgeries on my right knee. Yep. And so two, two massive you know, knee surgeries, that was about like six, seven years ago. So my knee's a little stiff. So when I train legs, it takes me a good 75, 90 minutes to, from start to finish. That's a warm up to finish. So I'm at the gym, stretch, et cetera. Most of my, most training, if I'm doing, you know, my cars and my pails and rails before training, any, any other day takes me an hour max. I mean, I, I'm, I train five days a week and that, that's in, in competition prep or off season, it's five days a week. And most of my workouts are an hour long. And so it doesn't, it really doesn't take that much, I think, you know, to really get an effective workout in, you know, and the thing is too, is if you want to make any change in life, whether, whether it's in the gym, whether it's work, whether it's business relationships, you got to put in effort, like you fucking got to work, right? Like you can't expect any progress to be made if you're not really trying, you know, if you go into the gym and you just get on a machine and just press away, like, and you're on your phone, like you're not breathing heavy, like, what do you expect? Like, right. unless you're really going to look give over your body. and have a conversation with someone while your bicep curling, that's not going to get it yeah, done. Yeah, there's no way. Yeah. Like, that's, that's when you really know you're going to make progress. You really have to put in the effort, I feel like. You know, and, and people, you know, it, it's sad that people just want that instant gratification. I think, you know, in the fitness space, especially with, you know, if diet nutrition's, you know, with the goal, whether it's to, to lose weight or it's to gain weight or to perform better. It's one of the hardest sports to do, I think, because it's such a delayed gratification. Yes. You know, you have to put in all this work. I mean, you both know you have to put in all this work for such a long time and it takes so long to see changes. You don't see changes week to week. You know, it might, might be not, you know, it might be a month, you know, it might be, you know, you like, I, I mean, like my, my, my wife, when she, when she, during this competition prep, she, she plateaued with her weight for, God, I think it was like five or six weeks. So she was freaking out about it, which I understand, you know, you're really putting in you know, all this, all this work, but you just got to keep pushing through, right. you know, keep got to be, you know, if everything's on point, you know, you might plateau, you got to re got to change some things up, but you just got to keep working. Otherwise, what do you expect? You're not going to, you know, anything you do in life, if you don't put in the effort, it's not a priority. It's not going to change. So you have to just shift that mindset and you, whether you hit one workout, a, one workout a week or five, that one is still better than nothing. Yes. You know? So if you can, you know, twice a week, if you do a, an upper body day, a lower body day, and you get anything in, that's better than nothing. So I think that's something that people, people need to remember is like, it's, you don't have to be there five, six days a week. Like that's not how it works. Right. You know, if you had to, if you had to pick something, yeah. If you had to pick one thing, I'm sure you guys say the same thing. If you had to pick one thing, that's a priority. You know, a lot of these people are all going to lose weight. Well, they jump on a treadmill, they jump on a bike and they do all this cardio or stairs. Like I think personally, I'm sure you guys would agree. It'd be so much more beneficial for them to be lifting weights than doing that hour of cardio every day. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. So it's just, it's like shifting the priority. Like you know, it's like I do. Don't don't judge me. I do very little cardio right now. Yeah, I'm still relatively lean with the amount of food I eat, and so it, cardio should be a tool. I think to, to keep the heart healthy for one, mm-hmm. but it should be it should be just kind of like a supplement to the training we already do. That's kind of how I feel about it. Right. And you don't even do yeah. like um because who was it? I think we talked about Janelle a lot on here, but uh, we had a guy uh, that we knew in DC and like when he was like mm-hmm. really jacked, he would like only do like a couple of sprints or yeah. he would only do like a very small amount of, of things that were cardio. <laughs> like, yeah. He was, he was very limited. He was like, nope. And like, let be a class. Yep. And then he would like demonstrate a movement. He's like, that's all I'm doing. That that's my it. cardio. That is, yeah. that is all right. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, my, my, my cardio consists of, of walking the puppies, you know, a couple miles a day. That's about it. You know, usually one to two miles and, that's about, that's about what we're getting today. Today's a rest day. So, you know, took them for like a two mile walk and then a little sauna, a little cold plunge. And there, I'm here. 
Yeah. Is this cut it better? Right now with the sauna, though? Well, walking a mile, oh, for, yeah. I mean, that's. Oh. That's yeah. I mean, even 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 down here when it's, you know, six o'clock in the morning you know, before the sun comes up, it's still just humid and nasty. I mean, whew. yeah. So that, that's good. My, my my heart rate gets up a little bit. It's still still hot. So it's pretty, hot, pretty brutal. It's hot. Yeah, so you guys know it. You, yep. um, around this time of year, ago, and it was pretty hot. Yeah. Uh, and my my yeah. injury was what? Did I have a shoulder? I didn't remember what I had. I have like a shoulder, wrist, and like a plantar fasciitis. And you came for like my upper, upper my back, so. neck. Oh, yeah. I've been doing my homework. I haven't seen a PT since I've seen you. I just wanted to throw that. Good. In there. I literally do my exercises, and Cody, maybe you see me mm-hmm. doing that sometimes. So yeah. Back to my same ones. Yep. And I've been yeah, doing nice. good. <laughs> love it like some See, pr- prime example prime example if you do your shit and you get better I've, right? I've like, been good be i have it. not had any problems yeah so i hope we're love it. Out time i do want to ask you before you know we get too long here um yeah so this is a we're a golf i'm a golf brand now uh yeah, so yeah. i want to kind of ask you about like you know i've sent i've tried to send you more golfers but people are stubborn about going to physical therapists so yeah. i've given a lot yeah. of information out like so if you're listening like please go see a physical therapist. If you have an energy uh, yep. three, they will fix you up. So like, what are some of the most common ones you see from like golfers? And I've seen yeah. you with older gentlemen, but um, you know, yeah. all like walks of life. Yeah. Like, what are some of the most common yeah. ones you see? So, so I would say with, with most of my golfers, I mean, obviously in Jupiter, Florida here, I mean, we see a ton of golfers. We see some guys, some pro, quite a few pro golfers too. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it, it's amazing. Um, you know, you see a little bit of everything. You know, a lot of these guys are in great shape. I mean, most, most of the golfers nowadays, I mean, they're pretty damn good shape. And I'd say the, the biggest thing is we see a lot of hip and back. I mean, and that's, that's the biggest too. You know, uh, you know, people really, I think, neglect their hips. I mean, they might stretch them, but they don't strengthen them. Like people aren't strengthening their hip rotators really well. Uh, their hip internal rotation isn't good. I mean, because when you're swimming in a club, if, if that, you know, that front foot is not rotating, you know, well, you're going to, you know, if, if the hips don't rotate with mobility in there, we're going to torque the spine more. And so I'd say a lot of hip and back. And then obviously we do get quite a bit of neck in there too. Um, we'll sprinkle in some shoulder and some wrist, but I mean, I'd say the spine is really, really important. Make sure we have good rotation, good movement. Um, you know, whether that's the, the, the thoracic spine, lumbar spine or cervical. So making sure we can really open up that thoracic rotation, make sure that the, you know, everything's just strong and stable. Cause I mean, Golf's a pretty violent sport. I mean, when you're swinging a club pretty hard, I mean, that's a lot of torque to put on the body. And yeah. so if you don't have the stabilizers, I feel like, to really support it, I mean, that's pretty dangerous. Mm-hmm. So I'd say the, the the spine, you know, the whole spine, you know, neck, neck thoracic and lumbar is huge, as well as the hips. Those are probably the most common things I see, um, you know, weekly for my golfers. Yeah. Can I ask you a couple of your, like, you know, just a couple of uh, ones that you would give, like, someone for a hip? And mm-hmm. actually cervical yeah. spine because I think people really neglect that. I mean, yeah. I think you see a lot of like torso yeah. rotation and stuff out there on mm-hmm. online. Um, I want to hear yeah. your from hip, but definitely like something yeah. like cervical spine because people don't realize like yeah. how important a role that plays on your ability to turn, right? Like if your cervical spine right. isn't moving well, you're gonna a lot of things below that are gonna start doing some yeah, some funky stuff. Other stuff, right? Yeah, because you know, at the end of the day, if we're doing a, any, any sport where we're trying to move objects from point A to point B you know, whether it's a, a golf swing or a snatch, like your body will figure out a way. Right. And then that's when we get injuries. And so I, I think for the hip, you know, working, working internal rotation, you know, there, there's a lot of ways uh, we can work pails and rails for hip uh, internal and external rotation. I mean, so I'm so speaking to our shoulder internal external rotation people, you know, usually shoulders are pretty easy to work, but people don't work that for their hips, the hips rotate. I mean, the hip joint is very similar to the shoulder joint. So if you have really poor hip internal rotation, there's some really good ways to prime that up and to get it stronger so you can follow through on your swing while that foot stays planted. That hip does rotate internally. So I've treated a lot of golfers with back pain. They're like, oh, my back hurts. And I'm like, well, we got to fix your hip. And they're like, well, my hip doesn't hurt. I'm like, well, your hip shit. So if we fix your shit hip, your back's going to feel better. Yeah. And so like people neglect that a lot. So I think that, that that's an easy one uh, relatively to do, you know, working hip internal external rotation for strength and stability. Uh, as well as the mobility component, it needs to be mobile. It needs to move on. It needs to be strong. Uh, for the neck, I mean, it sounds like sounds like Cody, you might be doing some of the, the cervical cars. So doing some of the neck cars that we do. You know, I, I make my guy that just left this morning. I had first first guy. He's been doing his thoracic cars and his cervical cars all the time, and just incre- improving that mobility and then learning how to like where your body is in space. 
and you know we can generate that strength just by moving better. I think those are those are some huge things people can really work on, as well as just you know overall just making sure that we're we're not neglecting the little muscles. You know, we're making sure that we're working you know our stabilizers, our rotator cuff, our hip rotators. You know, the spine's made to flex. You know, you guys know that very well. The spine's made to flex, made to extend. Uh-huh. And so as long as your tissue can handle the load we put, I can rotate. You know, as long as we, we make sure that we're developing the load and the tolerance to that, whether we're strengthening it with, with bands, with cables, with weights, with gravity, you know, those, the, a lot, there's so many ways to do it. There's no one perfect exercise. I mean, everyone that comes in, I'm sure you both know too, they, with your clients, not everyone's going to fit this perfect mold. Hey, I want you to do these three things. Mm-hmm. There's no, like we see it on Instagram all the time. Do these three exercises. This is, this is what you have to do. It's like, well, no, not everyone should do that. It might, it might work for a lot of people, right. but you know, we got to remember what's the, what's the goal. Is it, is it a strength goal? Is it a mobility goal? Is it a connective tissue goal? Is it a capsule goal? And there's all these different factors that can play such a big role into that. That's exactly why people need to go see a PT. Yeah, exactly. Cause it's, it's, right. it's you know, we want to be able to help people and it's that uh, you hate to give the answer of, um, it depends, but really yeah, it's always, possible. always, it's the right answer. And, you know, for those of us, I mean, we're trainers, but we can only take people so far and we both really believe in finding yeah. a PT because there's nothing better than having a good PT in your back pocket to sort of I agree. assess you, know, you, tell you what's going yeah. on. What has things changed too? I used to have injuries in my hips and now it's all yeah. like these things evolve as we, as our training gets different and all that good stuff. So big time. I think that's a really good way actually to wrap up and say, please find yourself a good PT. Like yeah. Jeff, right. Who, you know, and, Jupiter, find, yeah. Find and, and one Parker. of the, well, one of the things too, you know, don't, if, if I could make a recommendation to people out there, don't just find a, a basic PT, find somebody who, actually is like an athlete who actually yeah. cares, who actually yeah. knows what they're doing. I think the best therapist, uh, you know, any PTC, whether it's a, a great Cairo or a PT, the best therapists are, are athletes themselves, you know? Right. So somebody who's been through it, I mean, you guys are both great at what you do because you guys golf, you guys are fit, you guys have done, play a lot of sports, cross and all that stuff. Like you guys know what you're talking about. You know, I've played a lot of sports and done all that stuff. So I feel like I have a better understanding of what the requirements are not only physically, but also mentally, you know, so if you can really understand what someone's goal is, what their approach is and be able to break down what we're doing. I think that's so important to make sure that your, your therapist or that's treating you uh, or your Cairo or your neuromuscular therapist or whoever, besides whoever's, whoever you're working with, make sure that they can break down the movement patterns you have and not just say, Oh, my shoulder hurts. Well, let's look at the elbow. Let's look at the back. Let's look at the neck. Let's, let's break down the whole system to figure out what's going on and why. And I think that's so important because a lot of basic general PTs, if you're, you know, going to a, a PT mill where they're seeing a bunch of people, you're not going to get the care you need, you know? So, so I think it's, it's important, you know, you're, you're going to get what you, you know, if you're going to put a couple bucks into it, you're going to get a couple bucks out of it, you know? So if you, if you put, if you make an investment to see a good PT, it's going to pay off in the long run, I think. Right. And then, I mean, I, I, even to your point, you're talking about, you know, helping someone with their back. I'm like, Hey, let's talk about your hip. Yeah. Like, I mean, I came to see you, I had seen multiple visits <clears throat> for plantar fasciitis. Um, uh, people don't know. It's like, you know, pain in the arch of your foot when you walk or run yeah. it's giant pain. Yeah. Back. Um, and until yeah. I met you, everyone was just like treating my calves. They were like, Oh, we'll just dry and heal your calves. Yeah. We'll call yeah. it. That. Um, and Jeff, I got down there, like looked at my whole foot and he's like, Oh, your big toe is shit. Your big toe doesn't yep. move at all. Yep. And yeah. I was, was like, extended. oh, I was like, gives a, it's a toe, I'm like whatever. Yeah. But he's like, no, he's like, you got to get this thing moving better and it'll fix and it'll help your whole foot. So yeah, it's important yep. to no. get all the little things. Checked out. Who knows? You could have a toe problem like I do. No, but yeah. sure, if you get a good PT, they're absolutely not all created equal. And I'm really glad Jeff brought that right. up because I do yeah. get that from clients. They go to their insurance provided one that's at a hospital down the road or whatever. Yeah. It's like, no, right. no, 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 no. Do your research. Yeah. A lot of the independent mm-hmm. ones that are out there doing their own thing or who I suggest people look for. And that's mm-hmm. what we've had success with in the past since we've lived all over the place. Um, but 100% y'all are not created equal. Yeah. Dr. Jeff yeah. is quite, quite a unique one, actually. So. Appreciate that. You gotta, you gotta yeah. find somebody who cares though. You know, you gotta, yeah. you gotta, like, if you ask, I mean, you guys know, and any of my clients would tell you, like, I, I'm very lucky to love what I do. Like, I love it. Like, it, it, it brings me joy to help people. And I just love like fixing people. It's a puzzle. You know, it's fun because I get to, I get to learn about people. Like we shoot the shit while we're working together and it's just fun, you know? So finding someone who's really passionate about what they do and continues to learn and educate themselves. Like 
that's that's something that I think is really important because like I don't want people to have to see me all the time. You know, I like just like you said, Erica, like you've been doing your, your stuff. Like you don't have to see me all the time. You know, if somebody, you know, they start to feel better, all right, here's keep doing your stuff. When you need me, you come see me. You know, I don't want you, to, I don't want I don't want most people to come in and see me three times a week. Like if I see you once a week or once a month, great. Follow me as long as you're getting better. Yeah. I mean, that's what I always said about a, a good trainer too, is like, you shouldn't have to train with me forever. Like as a one-on-one, right. you should probably do one of my programs yeah. because it's programs, not one-on-one sessions, but I should teach you exactly. enough and I should do a good enough job to where you can now like go out and do this on your own. So like same thing with, with you, but then I'm like, but if you want to keep paying me to come back and see me because you enjoy me yeah, services, that's, that's totally fine too. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. hundred percent. Yep. Enjoy you and your services. Hey, whatever. What you know, okay. if, you, if you want to keep coming back and like you know, hang out and like we can do a session yeah. and then I can just check you out or whatever. Yeah. And Jeff can cup you or whatever it is, you know, just like as a yeah. part some maintenance, you know, because you enjoy us. Like that's you know, that's that's fine. yeah, exactly. It's the way to do this it. It's a business. Let's yeah. stop. <laughs> for Lola and squat. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. I think we could have gone on forever, but I don't want to keep you too long. Yeah, no, this was great, Jeff. Yeah. I mean, seriously, yeah. you're appreciate you guys. Information. I'm sure we'll have you on again. Um, please, yeah. love it. For for anybody listening, again, please reach out to Jeff. He's very accessible on the in- Instagram. I think is what the best way for mm-hmm. people to find you. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. That'd be the best way to do it. What is it, Doctor? Uh, well, what is your handle? It's actually yeah. It's actually just J letter J dot heart H A R T J dot heart. Pretty easy to find me. If you got questions, shoot me DM, let me know. I'm, 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 I'm happy to help. So you kind of steer you guys in the right direction. And, you know, if you're not in the area, I do do some virtual stuff. Otherwise, I'm sure I can find a, a great PT in your area too for you. Yeah, he's worth talking to y'all. And he, yeah, you are really connected to people all over the world, all mm-hmm. over, at least all yeah. over the country, which is really helpful. So, and there's a lot of golfers mm-hmm. around Definitely. where you are, just in Jupiter. So, uh, oh, yeah. You still go oh, to yeah. Stewart and work at that one place once a week? Is it Revive? I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I still, yeah, tw- actually twice a week, Mondays and Fridays, I go up to Stewart at Revive up there, uh, the Revive gym. And a lot of the top pro bodybuilders are up there. I do see a lot of just the, you know, general clients. But a lot of, a lot of, like, there's actually a lot of golfers up there in Stewart too. So a lot, yeah, a lot of golf up there. So I've I seen, seen quite a few people. I saw, I saw this girl I follow on Instagram. Uh, she's much more popular than yeah. me. But she was in there the other day. So at Revive. So. Yeah. What's the place Great gym. Be? So, yeah. Shout out, shout out to Dom, uh, who, who owns Revive. He's added 30 pieces of equipment to the gym this past week. So, oh, man, yeah. That's awesome. It was, already, it was already the best gym in, in the state, and I think he just solidified it as the best in the country. So if you're wow. uh, ever in the Stewart, Stewart area in Florida, go, you are missing out if you don't go to that gym. Great awesome. gym. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, again, cool. thanks so much, Jeff. Um, yeah. Appreciate awesome. you guys. Yeah, thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thanks we'll for having me on. Up. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. And thanks, everybody, for listening. Appreciate you guys. Thanks, man.